Welcome back to the Data Protection Diaries and welcome back to the vlog. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about privacy automation software, what it is, do you need it, and if you're deciding whether or not you do need it, how do you choose the best provider for your organization? If you find these videos useful, if you find this content interesting, please do make sure that you like, subscribe, comment down below. All of those things are really useful just to help YouTube understand that these videos are interesting. We're very, very close to reaching 500 subscribers, which is pretty impressive for a channel that just talks about data protection so any help that you can give us in reaching that target will be massively appreciated anyway for now let's get on with what we want to talk about today so privacy automation software if you are working in the data protection industry indeed in the security industry as a whole you will have absolutely no doubt found some kind of privacy automation software be it from LinkedIn, be it at a conference or an event, or be it landing directly in your email inboxes. We are now in a world where we are almost inundated with different technological solutions, some of them telling us that they can make us 100% compliant with GDPR, others telling us that they can just make our compliance journey easier, but every single one of them is offering a different solution. So what do you do? How do you pick one? Do you even need one? These are all questions that we regularly get here at iStorm. What is privacy automation software? Well, PrivTech, as we like to call it, is essentially a way of collating all of the information, processes, documentation, and controls that you need to ensure that your com business is compliant with data protection law and indeed the GDPR. Some of these tools can help you build um, a ROPA, so a record of processing activity. Others can help you manage uh, consent and the collection of consent um, for cookies and for marketing permissions for your website. They can help you identify processes, different controls. They can help you build data maps. Some of them can even help you field inquiries and queries coming through to your organization. So the idea is, these are essentially tools to create a more harmonized solution within your business so that you don't have lots of spreadsheets, lots of disparate pieces of information all over the place. You need privacy automation software. Well, that is a question that only you can really answer. Privacy automation or automation in general is always, almost always a way for me of improving efficiency and being able to demonstrate compliance with a particular requirement. Now, the efficiency thing is important because if you are in a larger organization, automating privacy and automating a number of your controls like data protection impact assessments, risk registers, and subject access requests is definitely not going to be a bad thing. If you've got a lot going on, you've got a lot of different people working on a lot of different things, funneling all those things into one central place where you as a DPO or you as the privacy lead can go in and keep a track of what's going on is always going to be a good idea. Arguably, if you're in a smaller business, it's still going to be a good idea. It may help you keep an eye on the business, keep an eye on the controls, and it allows you to keep track of what is going on. The challenge for me here is whether or not businesses understand that they need to look to automation or they understand what the pitfalls are with that. Privacy, PrivTech, automation, tools, software, all of these things are very, very good if and only if you already understand the processes and the controls that you have in place within your organization. So if you're looking at PrivTech software and you are undecided as to whether or not you need it, the first thing that you need to ask yourself is, do we currently have an understanding of what it is that we are doing? Do we have processes, procedures, and controls in place? 
Are those controls effective? Are they easy to manage or are they complex and causing us challenges? The next step is to then look at how you can improve or refine those processes and the right number of people involved. Are things getting stuck in different places, getting lost in email accounts or lost in meeting notes? Are people just not responding to you when you're asking them to fill out a data protection impact assessment or is your impact assessment just too complicated? Once you can start to answer these questions, then you can start to look at whether or not some kind of software or automation tool might make those processes more efficient, make them easier to manage, and essentially help your business be more compliant. What you don't want to do is automatically assume that by buying some privacy management software, all of this stuff is going to get done for you. Now, there are a number of different options out in the market, depending on whether you are a large scale international multinational organization or whether you are a smaller uh, SME. Now, defining and deciding what option is best for you will be driven by your overall requirements and your processes. Some of the most well-known privacy management software tools on the market today require upwards of 200 hours of learning and training to be able to utilize them properly. That is a massive undertaking for anybody, let alone a small, medium enterprise. That may well be suitable for large multinational companies with lots of support, money and lots of compliance teams, but it's probably not going to be suitable for a business of 10 people that specializes in direct marketing or database creation. So you need to identify the tool that's suitable for your business once you've identified whether or not you need a tool and once you've identified if you even have the processes and controls in place to be able to automate. There is no point in trying to automate something that doesn't already exist and isn't already working in a fashion that you can see whether or not there's going to be any business benefit. Personally, I don't really have a favorite tool. I've used lots of different tools. I've used them in lots of different situations and in lots of different organizations. And there are companies that I go to and there are companies that I would avoid. I'm not here to talk about those companies. We are not sponsored by anybody. Nobody is paying me to do anything. These are just my views. My view is that you need to make sure that you are comfortable with the tool that you are buying and that it suits your business and your business mindset. And if you are comfortable with that and you're comfortable with paying the money, then privacy automation may be for you. But do not, please do not think that just by buying a tool and following the instructions and putting the information in that you are suddenly going to be compliant with GDPR because you're not. There's a lot of stuff that needs to happen in the background. You still have to have education, awareness, training. You still have to have the procedures, the policy controls. You have to understand what it is that you're trying to fix before you can try and automate those processes. As always, this is a very succinct view on the world. If you have any questions, please do feel free to get in touch and you'll catch our email address um, and website at the end of this video. Of course, you can always drop a comment down below. What do you think about privacy, um, PrivTech and software automation? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Does your company use it? Have you realized any benefits? What have the challenges been? Comment down below. Do get involved in the conversation. And of course, make sure that you like, subscribe, follow us on LinkedIn on all those good things. And we look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks very much.